and we're live. What is up, everybody? How we doing? How we feeling? Welcome to yet another episode of the Final Vibe Podcast. My name is Kevin Reap, and alongside me is my co-host, Andrew White. Andrew, what's shaking? You know, nothing's shaking at the moment, but I feel really good. My dad says that phrase, what's shaking? And uh, I will say it for the rest of my life. I love it. It's my yeah. favorite thing. I say it all the time. Definitely an old-timer's phrase, though. Now my students will be like, what's shaking? What's shaking, baby? Yeah, what's, no, it's what's shaking, bacon. Oh, okay. That yeah, does yeah. make more sense. Right, yeah. Welcome to the show, everybody. Episode 19, and today, boy, do we have a special guest. Today's guest, my wife, Jacqueline Reap. Welcome to the podcast. How's it going? Thanks so much for having me. Going pretty well. Thank you. Uh, for, you made it all the way to the studio. Hope you found the place okay. <laughs> Guys, that's a joke because the studio is in their basement. Studio is in our basement. I'm in... sure the audience is hee hawing right now, <laughs> cracking up, <laughs> pulling over on the side of the road to wipe the tears away from laughing. Safety so hard. first, everyone. Safety first. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Today's show is going to be a little unique in that this isn't going to be like a one and done for you. I think we'll have you back. So we're not going to go too, too heavy into the questions. Kind of another episode that's more conversation. Uh, you and I have known each other for quite some time. It's true. Let's start with that. How long have we known each other? Well, I mean, officially, probably since fifth grade. Come on, guys. Let me ask the questions here. When did you guys meet? When was the first twinkle in the eye? I would say fifth grade was the first twinkle. Fifth for sure. grade. Who made yeah. the first move? I wrote her a note on a bus in middle school that said, "Do you like me?" Mm. That's so Hollywood, <laughs> Kevin. Good for you. Right, right. With the yeah. one, with the. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. How many options did you give her? I put Y or N, and she wrote maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, Guys, explain it was that. School. I mean, I don't know. Well, was yeah, no, I don't. I think you did the right thing. You don't want to play all your cards. Exactly. I mean, That's play hard to too. get a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> This is middle school. You can't just slip me a note up. and get a date. That was at the science center. I think you're right. Yeah, must have been middle school then. But yeah, we were in the same fifth grade class. So that is so crazy. And and what was the elementary school? John Weldon, in St. Louis somewhere. Yeah, yeah, St. Charles. That's where you people are from. That's mm-hmm. where uh, yeah, us people are from. That's crazy, guys. You're not even high school sweethearts. You're like elementary sweethearts. Yeah, makes it even more adorable. Hashtag final vibe. Hashtag legacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually, that's pretty true. <laughs> So we wanted to have you on the show because in my eyes, you are a special person who does special things. And we talk a lot about legacy and life. And you've done, even in recent history, some pretty big things in your own life. Mm -hmm. So let's, I think we should start with an introduction. Who are you and what do you do? Well, um, like Kevin said, my name is Jacqueline. Um, I... For work during my, you know, 40 hours a week, um, I work for a company called Veterans United Realty. So our primary goal is helping to get veterans in active duty military into homes in their local community. Um, so I lead a small team that helps kind of facilitate that process. So we work primarily, my team specifically works primarily with real estate agents. Outside of work, I kind of consider myself a hobbyist. I love photography. I you know, love exercise. I love meal prepping, you know, and doing scrapbooking. Res- scrapbooking. That's a big one, right? It is a big one. I also have a blog. I mean, if there's a hobby out there, I've probably tried it at some point in my life. Um, I'm also a fur mama. I have two, we have two dogs mm-hmm. and I love them. I love taking them for walks and we love going to the park and stuff like that. So one of those dogs is under your chair right now, licking her paws. And I really hope that's not getting picked up on the microphone because it sounds gross. It would just be super slurpy dog mouth noise. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you say you're a hobbyist, but I think that doesn't give you enough credit because you aren't just like, that makes it sound like you just dabble in and out of some of these things. But like, for example, the blog, how mm-hmm. long have you been blogging? Um, Actually in September, I hit my 11th year of blogging. I started blogging when I was a freshman in college, when I went away to college just so that I could kind of keep better in touch with my folks and everyone at home and so I literally would write about like what my grades were or like how I failed a test or whatever I thought was important at that time of my life. And that has kind of transitioned throughout the last 11 years. But yeah, I've been doing it for a little bit. Blogging is one way that you document your life. The other is scrapbooking because mm-hmm. there's scrapbooks in every room of our house. Yes. And there's different names for these scrapbooks. Some are smash yeah. books and some are Project Life. Mm-hmm. 
mini books. What's mini a books. smash book? A smash book is more like a junk journal. Um, th- I don't even know what brand it was, but they made these specific books called smash journals. And it was every page, every piece of paper was a little bit different. And so some of them had prompts on them. Some of them were just meant for you to like glue things on. Um, so it came with a pen that the other side was a glue stick. So you really, all you needed was that thing, that nice. book and the pen. Yeah, it was like a free form type of thing. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. I had no idea. Teach me all the things about scrapbooking because I don't know. <laughs> Why do you scrapbook? Um. Oh, man, that's tough. I have been scrapbooking since 2013. That's, well, probably longer than that. But that was like really when I started doing like a consistent like history of my life. So, you know, every month I print out just a couple of pictures and, you know, put them into the pocket pages. Um, but I think that I do it just because I love looking back on it so much. When I was growing up, I would go over to my grandparents' house and I would have so much fun just looking back through all their memories, um, the trips that they'd gone on. And I was like, man, I really want, like, I want that history of my life. Um, and so that's kind of what started, you know, got me started. I think scrapbooking is interesting because when we go back to our grandparents' houses and you look at these photo albums and things that they have, they're really sweet to look through and actually like physically hold. But it's important to know that like our grandma actually sat down and physically put the pictures in the book. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't do that anymore because of the internet. We upload 54 photos to Facebook and move on. But you said no to that and you keep doing it. Is that why? Is that, do you think we're going to lose something from doing it online? Yeah. I just don't know. I just don't know how long I will be online and if that will be a consistent way to record keep. I also think that I don't, there are some things about my life I don't really want to share on the internet. Some sad things that I want documented and that just aren't necessarily appropriate for the whole world to know. Um, And I think I'm really, I try to be really intentional about what I share. And so in my scrapbooks, it's a little bit more open. Like the people that come in my house and want to, you know, look at my scrapbooks, I might be willing to share that with them, but I may not be willing to share that with you know, 500 of my closest friends on Instagram or Facebook. You're saying you don't want your entire life broadcast on the internet, Jacqueline. I know. It's kind of hard to believe. <laughs> but I mean, we, we always, you know, hear the phrase, you know, Instagram or Facebook is our highlight reel. And I think that that's true. And that's great. It's a great place for that. But it's not always the best place for sad things or hard things or, you know, I don't want to talk about COVID every time I go on Instagram. But in my scrapbooks, you know, there there's a place for that. So, and it's, it's just cool to document it and have actual years because there are times where I'll, you know, take a break from social media for a while. And so I never have to take a break from my scrapbooks. And if I do, I can go back and fill those in later. You'll do scrapbooks for like specific weekends and stuff too. And like, like give them to the people that hosted that weekend, right? Yeah. I have a couple of times, um, I've created like mini books basically. Um, so for example, we have some friends that live in Hamilton that moved from Columbia. And so I have printed out all the pictures, cut them, you know, into like a little bit smaller, put them in a book, put some cute stickers and stuff like that on them and just wrote like a sweet note that was just like, Hey, thanks so much for hosting us. Like we, that, that really like made our weekend. We had such a fun time and then I'll send that to them or give it to them. And it's just a fun way to remember a fun weekend that we had. Cause I think we can all agree that that was a fun weekend. Yeah. Well, I say that because I think that's a, it's a cool gift idea. If it's somebody cool. Yeah, if somebody hosts you for a weekend or whatever, it's a, it's a unique way to not pay for dinner or whatever, but still just to give them something back that then now they have to mm-hmm. remember it as well. Uh, and then shows how much it meant to you as well. Mm-hmm. I think that's a cool. I, I love when you do that. Oh, thanks. I think one of the cool things about scrapbooks too is because uh, we always forget. Like when I look back at scrapbooks, I remember things that I wouldn't have been able to recall in the moment. Mm-hmm. But seeing those photos stirs up the memories. And yeah. I think that's a strange thing about memory that – it's it's there because you can recall it when you see it, but it's not something you can conjure in the moment. And so it brings happy emotions with it usually. Yeah, exactly. And I also love getting other perspectives. So after a trip, I might ask everyone to send me their photos and they may get some really cool pictures of events I wasn't at or, you know, just different things that like maybe I didn't see. And so that's also super cool. And I love including because you've probably heard Kevin talk about his day one project. And so sometimes I try to include those photos in our scrapbooks as well. That way it's not just me, it's his perspective. And, you know, we, it's just like a culmination of our life, our family and what that's looked like and how that's changed. I mean, if you look back at my 2013 albums, 
there are pictures of us from college that are just hilarious and like just what we did, how we spent our days, like what we ate. And like now it's just so different. And so it's just cool to see you know, each year how that just slowly changes because we don't think about that when we're in the moment, you know, we're just every, you know, we may, I I think a lot about how there are certain meals that we've liked at one point that all of a sudden we just never eat again. Yeah. Eat them three times a week for three months. Right. And then you look at a picture of it a year later and you're like, why don't we quit doing that? Yeah, exactly. And so it's just cool to see over time how that's changed. And I can't imagine, you know, us being 50 years old, looking at scrapbooks of, you know, what, what our life's like now or what it was like even when we were in college. So that's really, it's, it's all about that. Scrapbooking has big time legacy vibes, Kevin. It does. Big time legacy vibes. It does. And, and I'm sure not everybody listening has read everything that we've uh, written from the Final Vibe brand, uh, but it's something we talk about when, it, when you want to focus on your own legacy and how you will be remembered, a big part of that is documenting what you're doing. Because at the end of the day, as we said when we were talking to my grandma, what else are we other than the memories that we have uh, from the people that we that we touch along the way? So I think that scrapbooking is kind of a cool, and that's why I wanted to talk about it. I think it's a cool way to, to document what you are doing. It's unique, and it works, and, and it lasts forever. Okay, let's shift gears. Mm-hmm. When did you work at Walgreens? Five years ago? I started working there in twenty four, the summer of 2014. Okay. So let's say six years ago, you were stocking shelves at Walgreens mm-hmm. full-time. Mm-hmm. Today, you're at Veterans United. Mm-hmm. You lead a team of how many people? Uh, 13. Right 13 now. people. So that's a significant size team that you manage in a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Talk about that. I think that that's a unique thing. People listening... Um, I feel like we have people who listen and sometimes they're in jobs that they might not necessarily be jiving with and they have these bigger aspirations. And I look at you as a person who did just that and has uh, used any opportunity that was given to you as a way to take a step towards the next big opportunity. So what is it like to go from stocking shelves at Walgreens? Nothing wrong with that, of course, but now you have a team of people who uh, rely on you every day, who you rely on every day to do what you do. What's that been like? Oh, man. I don't really like to, I don't know. I don't like to think of myself in that way. I don't know. I guess I just am the type of person, like, I just like to go to work and really try my best every single day. Like, when I worked at Walgreens, even though I didn't love the hours, I I mean, I worked, um, like, 11 to 7. I worked really, like, their, their busy hours. Um, I didn't love that, but I loved getting to, you know, talk to people every day. I think at the end of the day, my number one goal is, can I help people? And how do I do that? And so at Walgreens, it was, you know, making sure that they, you know, had the thing that they needed. Um, I specifically was the wellness guide there. And so I focused on the kind of three wellness type aisles. So that was, you know, um, over the counter drugs. And, you know, I, I mean, I loved it. I got to talk to people, figure out how I could help them and, you know, maybe hopefully brighten their day a little bit. Um, like I said, it wasn't it wasn't a bad job by any means, and I loved the people that I worked with. Um, and then when I had the opportunity to join Veterans United five and a half years ago, you know, it was kind of the same thing. And um, I went on there to become a loan specialist with um, the home loans department and ended up not passing my tests. And so that was kind of like a little blow to the ego. I was like, oh, man, like I really thought, you know, I was going to nail this, knock it out of the park and, um, didn't. And so I got the opportunity to interview for a different position. And, um, I truly am a person that believes that, you know, things happen for a reason. And whenever I interviewed for that role, I thought it was going to be a perfect fit. And honestly, it has been, um, I started the team in one role and got to kind of start leading that team after, um, about a year and a half of being there. And so, yeah, I think at the end of the day, I and my how I kind of spend my current day to day is helping people still. I mean, whether that's real estate agents um, that I get to talk to on the phone or, you know, my team. One of the things I love to do at work is helping people find their potential and helping grow them. Um, I think that I not to like toot my own horn, but I think that I'm really good at having hard conversations with people and giving critical feedback and criticism um, that can really help grow them into 
you know, a new role. And that's what I love about my job is finding those things and helping them grow in the, in those areas or in areas that they want to grow in. And so, um, I get to do that and I get to, you know, train people and I don't know. I, I love it. What would you say your management style is? And I know you alluded to it a little bit, but maybe not necessarily a style, but what makes a good manager? And, uh, you know, this is a legacy podcast. So in terms of leaving a meaningful legacy, uh, how do you think about management and the people that are technically beneath you? I think the biggest thing is just getting in there with it, with them and being willing to do hard things. And I mean, every single role that my team does, I've done. And and that's important. I definitely think so, too. And yeah. like I'm willing to do the hard things. I'm willing to if, you know, there's anything that needs to be escalated or anything that they need help with, like I'm right there helping them, you know, do it. And honestly, like. I that people have pointed that out in me and I, I don't think I would have realized that that was important until someone actually called that out in me. I think really good leaders encourage other people to be good leaders. And so I try I try really hard to do that. That's awesome. And I like that about VU because I obviously have never worked there, but what everybody says about it is that the work culture is awesome. Like it's tough work. Like it's a bit of a grind and Mm -hmm. a lot of those jobs in the beginning are really tough, Mm -hmm. but the work culture is awesome. It's a lot of fun. And people always say that there's room to move up. Mm -hmm. And so there's like a lot of optimism when you're in a position because you know you can work hard and level up a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's always, there's always room to grow. And even if that doesn't mean, you know, in specific position like for example on my team like we have multiple kind of tasks and stuff like that that we do daily so when I have someone who's like I really want to learn you know a a different side of what our team does it gives me the opportunity to say oh like here's this perfect spot where you can fit and sometimes I'll go to them and say hey I see you being really really great at this is that something you're interested in and, you know, whether or not it, they are interested or not, I think it's so cool that there are so many options and so many different things that we get to kind of touch and be a part of that, you know, allowing someone to maybe try something new or, you know, hop on a phone call with an agent for the first time. Like, it's awesome. That is awesome. And I like what you said earlier about how you're not afraid to have the difficult conversations because one of the things I think I value most about you as your friend is that you are a challenger in, in the best way. And I think that actually speaks to your Enneagram, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm you are a type an eight. eight. <laughs> you are the notorious eight. <laughs> yes. But that makes a lot of sense. And you do it in a way that is graceful and, and appropriately gentle, but it's direct when it needs to be direct. And I like that Thank because you. I've said this in former episodes, but I don't want to be the guy who's surrounded by people who molly coddle them all the time. Mm-hmm. And if I can be challenged, I want to be challenged. I want to be better. A hundred percent. And I, whenever I have hard conversations with people, my number one thing is how would I want them to treat me? Like I, none of us are growing if we're all just patting each other on the back all the time. For sure. We need to be intentional and encourage each other and, you know, pat each other on the back sometimes, but also sometimes we have to be like, Ooh, we're doing this. Should we, you know, pivot or, you know, there, I mean, there's so many good ways to have hard conversations. And I think when you truly love people for who they are, you can best have that kind of conversation with them. Sure. It, it opens up the door for that conversation. 100%. Like if you care for them on the front end and you've won their trust and their respect, then when you do say a challenging thing, they're more likely to take it to heart rather than to uh, revolt, push back. Absolutely. Defensive. And in in return, I ask them for that kind of feedback on myself because I'm definitely the type of person that wants to get that kind of feedback and improve myself. Beautiful. There's always room for improvement. I love that. I think management is always a good topic for legacy because you're a, you're a big time influencer. We were talking about your hobbies, scrapbooking, the day to day with the work. Another big aspect of your day to day, I think you even said it, is exercise. Mm hmm. What type of an impact does that have on your life? I think it has a huge impact on my life. Number one, stress relief. That's the number one thing I use it for, Um, in addition to trying to get myself healthy. So at the beginning of this year, um, I really set some kind of big goals for myself. Um, I, every year, pick a word of the year that 
is kind of set out to help me kind of figure out the direction or my intention for the year. This isn't something that I came up with. Um, this is something that Allie Edwards came up with and she calls it her one little word. Um, I definitely recommend checking it out, picking a word in the future. Um, but it's awesome. This year I picked open. And so I just kind of wanted to open my heart to, you know, just being intentional and getting myself healthy. And what does that look like without, feeling like it's so stressful or like it's just another thing I'm adding on top of an already kind of busy day. Um, and so at the beginning of the year, it kind of started off a little bit slow, well, slower than I would have liked. And um, at the end of February, I decided to do Andy Frasilla's um, 75 hard program. And so it's 90 minutes of exercise every day, two 45 minute sessions. And one of those has to be outside. It's a, some kind of diet program. Um, you know, there's just a, a lot of different pieces of the puzzle that he kind of combines to really execute this program. So I started at the end of February. And since then I've actually been exercising every single day since February 25th. Um, and so it's been really impactful on my life. It doesn't always mean, you know, going to the gym, lifting weights or even running. A lot of times it's, you know, walking and having a phone conversation with my mom. That's probably my favorite exercise of choice these days. Um, but I recently got into um, Orange Theory, which is, you know, a local gym here in Columbia. Um, I think it's actually like nationwide kind of a franchise. But anyways, um, I'm really trying to like, push myself just a couple days a week and then the other days focusing on, you know, just staying active and, you know, moving my body. Because when you, you know, sit at a desk most of the day, sometimes it's hard to get those steps in and really, you know, keep your body in, in a healthy place. So that's really been one of my big focuses this year. Nailed it. And I think one thing that I really like as being sort of the air quotes fitness person that I am is that you're really good at being okay with what's doable. And so many people like will set these really, really ambitious goals and then just never do them because they were so ridiculous on the front end. Mm -hmm. But you were strategic. You had a plan and you were able to modify that exercise. And I think also the plan sets you up for success and that it's like you have a choice. You know, you have two 45 minute windows and get outside for one of them, but it can literally be walking. Yep. So it's not like you have to be doing CrossFit. 27 times a week. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, it's just hard to jump into an exercise program that's that intense when you already have, you know, a ton of things on your plate. And if you can, that's awesome, but it's hard for that kind of thing to be sustainable over a long time. Totally. And like, what's better, like a week of hardcore CrossFit or two months of a 30 minute walk every single day, you know, to the point where you just started doing the thing and you got some momentum because so many times people set goals and they're not sustainable and they just never build any momentum. So it falls apart. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, honestly, I've been there. That's been oh, the last sure. couple of years for me. So this year it was just like, if I can get outside and go for a couple, you know, couple minute walk, even if it's taking the dogs, if it's talking to my mom, like I love it. It's, it's just so fun. It's relaxing to me. And you know, my, my parents don't live in Columbia, so it's great to just be on the phone with them and yeah, you know, Every night you you cross off a thing, you fill in a circle. Mm -hmm. What is that? Um, so another person that I follow on the internet is Elise Joy. Um, she has a printable, and it's uh, there's a bubble for every single day of the year. And so basically, her, her intention behind doing it wasn't do do this thing every day. It was just track what you're doing. And just know what you're doing and be intentional about what you're doing. And so I started, you know, at the beginning of the year when I set this open intention for myself, I, you know, said, I, I want to see how often I exercise. Well, like I said, I've been exercising every day since the end of February. So I have all of the, all of these little dots filled out. And what I realized for myself, what is key for me is having these rhythms of this is something I just do every day. It's not, it's not a routine. It's not like you don't feel like pressured into doing it. If something else comes up, if, if a friend needs me, I'm there. I'm 100% there. But if I have time to do this, it's something I definitely want to do. Super well said because basically what I heard you say was I'm making this a priority, 
But if there's something more important with a friend or somebody who has an actual need, I'm going to do that thing and I'm going to be okay and give myself, in air quotes, grace, even though I don't even think that's the right word. You're just adjusting to life and you're okay with it. Exactly. And I think that that's the difference between having rhythms and having a routine. Yep. Yep. A rhythm is something that ebbs and flows a little bit. Mm -hmm. But a routine, sometimes when it breaks for people, they just can't bounce back. Exactly. Yeah. So I think I think developing a rhythm is very much like a life skill, mm -hmm. especially with exercise. Very cool. It feels so good when you're in that rhythm too, you know? Oh, it's so good. I want to figure out how long it takes to get that feeling. I don't know if it's like 10 days, 25 days. You know, I feel it, like, yeah, I feel like people talk about like 21 days being something like what it takes to like really make. Form a habit or something. Yeah, like I would say start to form a habit. Yeah, start you to, know? absolutely. If you think about it, the people who are really, really good at what they do, dude, they've been doing it forever. Right. It's subconscious. Mm -hmm. It's just what they are. It's not even a habit. They would be like, oh, that's just what I do. I don't even think about it. And you want to get to that level of, you know, unconsciousness, unconscious execution. Right. Yeah. That's big time. All right. I would love to take this conversation another direction and ask you two about marriage and how marriage plays into legacy. It's a, it's a huge part of legacy and it's not something that we've really tapped into yet on the show. So given that you guys are the best options for the conversation, talk to me about legacy. Jacqueline, you don't want to lead? No, she You're has looking to, at Kevin she's like... She's guest. <laughs> Please, after you. Yeah, let me give you a specific question. Okay. When you got married, did you really know what you were signing up for? Not necessarily in like, who is Kevin or what will Kevin become, but in terms of forever in a lifetime committed to somebody, how can you possibly do such a thing in your 20s. You know what I mean? And we, we all do it. A lot of us do it. But what do you think about that? Were you prepared at the time? That's such a funny question. At the time that we got married, we had been together for six years officially and known each other for what seemed like our whole lives. So even though I maybe didn't understand exactly what it would look like and what all, you know, what it would hold, I knew that we would be successful I knew that he was my person. Like there was never any kind of regret. I was like, whatever is thrown at us, we'll figure it out. And I feel like we've done a pretty good job at doing that. I would agree with that. I would say absolutely that is true. Uh, for It's interesting when you say that question because like forever, like when you're in your 20s and you look at people who've been married for 70 years, for example, there's a couple, um, a couple examples that I have in my life of people who uh, have been married that long that you can look at. And it's amazing when you see those rare examples of people who have legitimately, not just been together their whole lives, but have lived a long time. And what you can accomplish when you have a partner that uh, both of you just kind of buy into doing life together, ups and downs, good days and bad days. But the ultimate goal is to just do the best that you can do together. I feel like you can do anything. And that's what I've seen in some of these examples of of, of, of people who have made it and they're walking that walk. Um, so as she said, I was her person. She was my person. We've known that for quite some time. Uh, and it's not so much in like a, we got comfortable kind of way, but it's just kind of in a, we work together like nobody, no, I don't think two other people can work together. You guys are on the same team. We're on the same team. Teammates and I'm, for life. And I'm a weird person to be a team member <laughs> with. So there's, there's, there, there aren't many people I think that, uh, could fill this role. So I'm glad I, I'm glad I met you when I did. And I knew that in like fifth grade. That's why I tried to lock you down back in John Walden. I, I mean, that's like, really good advice right there. Everyone listening, if you meet her in fifth grade, lock her down, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let her get sniped in middle school. Yeah. <laughs> that's when you always lose the love of your life. Yeah. Yeah. No. So you bring up a good point. And it's uh, that complimentary feature of being married. But at the same time, let's not pretend that everything is complimentary about you two. I'm sure you guys have many areas in which you butt heads and everybody does. How do you navigate that? And did you expect marriage to be a bed of roses from day one? Or did you know that it was going to be challenging? I think we approach it in a unique way. And I've not been as good at this lately as I have been for the first five years that we were married. But we kind of approached it with saying, like, we don't, do the the naggy fighting about the silly things. We just have never done it. It's just not accepted. It's silly to us, and we just kind of <laughs> we don't do that here. We just don't do it here. So it's like I mean, uh, you're not going to find us having arguments about small things that are going to like 
tear down the house. Yep. Um, because we just, I don't know, we both, we agreed years ago that this is not going to happen. We're going to talk about it. We're going to approach it. Day one, if something's wrong, don't say nothing's wrong. And then we just keep moving. Um, like I said, I think that I'm not as necessarily as good at that in the last couple uh, years and maybe I should say months. I don't know what it's what it is. Maybe COVID, but uh, would you agree with that? This yeah. is your chance to take a dig at Kevin, Jack. <laughs> Live on the podcast, you've got low hanging fruit here. You gonna snatch it? I don't know exactly what you're referring to about mm, the last cryptic. couple months. That is cryptic. But I mean, I think that I think that you're right. I think that there are things that we have kind of gone into our marriage agreeing about, and things that were like we're so much more willing to have a hard conversation or just be like, Hey, what's going on with this? Or like, is everything okay? And then an answering honestly. Um, I think that that really kind of gets us to settle things quickly and before they become, you know, kind of like a volcano explosion where it's like, Oh, now this is an actual problem. Um, so I think that that's something that we have always done really well. I think we're also like, we were best friends first. And I think that that, makes a difference for us because we treat each other in a way like friends, best friends. We like love doing things together, spending time together. And so hopefully some of those things can help outweigh, you know, the like putting each other's dishes away or, you know, picking up after each other or whatever that looks like. Um, but yeah, I think that we do pretty good. I emptied the dishwasher today before I got home. Thanks for doing that. Boom. Oh my goodness, Kevin, good for you. Yeah. Way to be selfless. Wash the sheets. It was a productive working from home for the last six months. Yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen whenever I go back to work, but yeah. I mean you'll be an animal. I'm just kidding. I was I was reaching for free points, but No, well, I think got you got him. him. I think you yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, she's I'm loving it. I'm reading the emotion. She's loving it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So one thing I'm pulling out of this is that you guys don't seem to waste a lot of effort and time on the small things. And I guess what I'm saying is you do a really good job of giving each other the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, definitely. And I think just assuming positive intent and also just being willing to be servant hearted towards each other. I think that, you know, like Kevin did today, unloading the dishwasher, like just little things like that, that means so much. And, you know, doing housework 50, 50 and whether that means, you know, me cutting the grass every now and again and Kevin you know, whatever that looks like for you, cleaning a bathroom or, you know, whatever, like just trying to help each other out in any ways that we can. And, you know, I think that that makes a huge difference. Right. Two people on the same team, not two people on different teams pursuing the same goal. Correct. Yeah. I think a lot of people miss that though. And well, and, and I'm not trying to be a hypocrite. I think I miss that sometimes. Uh, I need to celebrate my wife more often for the things that she does because it's easy to take people for granted, you know? So I, I want to celebrate that in you guys because I see you guys doing a really good job of it. I appreciate that. Another uh, this is a second blog post I think I've referenced in this episode. I got a text months ago at this point from a colleague of mine, and he said, say hi to your wife for me. She is your superpower. And I wrote this blog post about that. But it's that meant a lot to me because, like you said, when we can work together and we're on the same page and I help her accomplish what she's trying to accomplish and she does the same for me, it's, it's, it's amazing what you can do. And I say that sitting in a podcast studio that's in a spare bedroom, which is bizarre, but she was like, let's do it. And it was a silly idea when I said it. And now we're recording the whatever episode. 19, 19 and episodes later. Whole, yeah. And then it's, I did the same thing with the video game room and she's got a scrapbooking room and we're just, it's these things where we're just like, if we want, if that's what you're passionate about and you want to do it, we're going to figure out a way to do it. Um, and when two people are on board with that, you can typically turn it into something special. Yeah. yeah, I think too, just like making his dreams my dreams. Like when he said he wanted to do a podcast studio, studio in our house, I was like, yeah, let's do it. I was like, I still want to have a bedroom in here in case we have guests come over. So like, this is how we compromise. Like there's a bed behind the curtain, you know, and there's, you know, this awesome table and the microphone, you know, so it's all about figuring out ways to make his dreams happen. And likewise, I think we're each other's biggest hype person. And I love that. Well, that's true, yeah. That is big. And this room is such the beautiful picture of compromise. Uh, to tell people who haven't seen photos of it on Instagram, it's literally half a studio, half a bedroom, yeah. and there's a big black curtain. And you even said to me the other day, you've had guests stay in this room, and they've said that they've gotten amazing sleep because the blackout curtain is so good. It's like an actual cave. Yeah. I think Jay Wallace was so far the only podcast guest 
who recorded an episode and then slept in the bed right next door. Yep. So it's yep. extremely convenient too. If you're ever in town and want to be on the podcast, you can <laughs> you can stay here for free if you do the Final Vibe podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you make a fool of yourself on the episode, you can't stay You'll here. You'll have to figure out another yeah. option. Yeah. A lot of hotels. You do have a hammock in the backyard. We did. We Always got the tree option. cut down. Oh, that's right. No more hammock. No more hammock. We lost our hammock tree last week. No more hammock. Yeah. I have another question about legacy and marriage. You guys committed to each other for life. And people do that all the time. And I think it's really, really weird, to be honest. <laughs> I believe in marriage for my own reasons, but I think maybe not enough people really think about that forever commitment. And what do you guys think the next 30 years holds for you guys? I mean, you can never really know, but if you had to take a guess, what would you say? Oh, man, that's tough. I mean, honestly, I hope it's more of the same. I mean, the last five and a half years, had to think about how long we've been married. Last five and a half years have been awesome you know, doing life together and just getting to know each other better, learning about each other more. Um, I mean, I hope it's more of that. I mean, who knows what it's going to look like? Probably job changes, maybe new house, maybe sometime down the line we'll have kids. I mean, who knows? Maybe some more dogs. That's for sure going to happen. Um, but, you know, it's it's all I mean, I'm kind of here for the ride. I, I, I think we'll have a ton of dreams that we'll get to chase. We'll get to see final vibe grow up, so to speak, and, you know, the Mizzou esports program. And, you know, I don't know. I would say there's no chance that the next 30 years are boring. So Mm, true. That's exciting. I refuse. You know? Yeah. Because you guys have set your lives up in a way that they just won't be boring. And I don't mean to say that it's an amusement park and roller coasters and all that, uh, but you guys just have a livelihood about your lives and you like what you do. And it's just not going to be boring. Like, if you're content, boring isn't really a thing. Exactly. Yeah. Our favorite things to do would be... I would say over the next 30 years, what I want to continue to do in addition to the dogs and the family, we love to go out to eat with friends. Mm. That's like our favorite thing in the world. Yep. Uh, I hope that that is something that we do forever. Not necessarily the go out to eat, but just like it's always been cool just to meet people and go out with couples and or just individuals and just get to know people more. And I hope that we never lose that. Yeah. I hope we have more people over. I hope, well, when COVID ends, I guess. But I just love pe- having people over, hosting people, cooking for them, you know, like Kevin said, we love going out to eat. We love just like getting to know people on a deeper level. I think back to, I think, was it maybe your last birthday? We, it was Kevin's last birthday, I think. We were sitting at the bar at Flat Branch prior to COVID. And, favorite place on earth. And we spent like two hours talking to the gentleman sitting next to us. And we both left feeling so filled up. Like our cups were so full. And we were like, how do we do this more? Like that was just some random guy, like lived in Michigan or Wisconsin or something like that. And then, you know, like that's the kind of stuff we love. And so whether that be friends, whether that be new people that we get to meet, whether that be family, we love it. Do you guys like the idea of vacationing with friends? I love the idea of vacationing with friends. I love, I love traveling. We have not done that yet as a couples group. I I go, I travel to, she doesn't, this makes her frustrated, I think, because I travel all the time with my, with the guy's friends. There's like two yearly trips that I do and we've yet to do one with other couples, but I think we're going to change. It's that. probably on the horizon. I think it needs to be on the horizon. Yeah. So. I hope so. I mean, I, I'll, I'll travel anywhere. And weren't those awkward years like where we all just graduated, just give or take a couple of years. And yeah. then, like, you're just trying to like figure out like how much money we have and like, sure. what's this as uh, a mortgage. All right. We got a mortgage now. And then a couple of years later, I think now we're at a point where it's like, well, let's go on vacation. Right. With some friends. What's interesting about those early years of marriage is that it's like when you're young and you have the least amount of responsibility, but you also have the least amount of money. Yeah. So like in some sense, you have the most freedom, but it's the most limited. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then all of a sudden when you're 60 years old and all your kids are out of the house, um, you have more money maybe, but uh, you're just not as young as you were. And that's not to say that, you know, people in their 60s can't have a good time vacationing and traveling. But I do wish sometimes it could be a little flipped, you know, that we can travel a lot when we're young. And soak up those years, and then we'll get in the trenches for the families and, you know, lock ourselves down for 18 years while the babies turn into teenagers. Yeah. yeah. But also, I mean, take the babies. Like, let's go on a right. like, big group, huge trip with all, uh, all the kids. Like, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Let me see what it, what it's like with babies first before I agree <laughs> to the baby on the trip. I've, I've, Step one, baby. Step I've two, with baby like, on a trip. Yeah. I, I haven't interacted with many babies in my life. Perfect. I have another question. Okay. 
So Kevin, you and I talk about legacy a lot, and it's always in context of individual legacy. But I would love to know your guys' thoughts on leaving a legacy as a team. And Kevin has goals. Jacqueline, you have goals. But what are your guys' goals as people? Even if it's not like something specific, like do this, do that. But what kind of a legacy do you want to leave on people? What's going to be the Reap family fingerprint? I hope that we get to point back to family. And family, people listening, I don't know if this is a a big thing to like take out of the the hat, but I was always unsure of family. I kind of dug the idea of the two of us just living life together forever. And to be honest, at the beginning of Final Vibe, March, April, COVID, I just started looking at all of this differently, all of this meaning life and what we're doing and why we're doing it. So I started thinking more about an alternative to just the two of us living life together. So that is like something that I've thought quite a bit about lately. And um, it makes more sense to me than it did in the past. So when I zoom out and think about how we would want to be remembered, I can't imagine the feeling that my grandma has who we interviewed just a couple weeks ago to have her sitting here and to be able to point to three kids who are doing amazing things who now have their own kids. I mean, what, what on earth is more special than that? You know? So it's difficult to say that because we don't have any kids. Um, I think our dogs are fine examples. Your surrogate, <laughs> your surrogate children for now. Yeah. They're good examples. As one the of them dogs. sleeps adorably <laughs> in the chair next to Jacqueline. She is the most precious pup in the world. She is sweet. Uh, but I hope that, that we can say that. And that's what I will work towards every day when we get to that point. And it's been a blast. Also, we have a couple, we're at that stage of our life where we have a couple friends who have now had kids. And it's different because when other people, like when your friends' friends have kids, or like family friends, it's just, it's a different vibe. But when it's like your friends and they have kids, it's a weird, it's a feeling I've never had. Like I'm genuinely pumped up for them. Right. I want to meet these kids. So it's kind of exciting. You take on more of an uncle role. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't met either. Then, either right. Either but either you know what two. I mean. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think in addition to that, um, just leaving a legacy that involves being really intentional with people and just loving on people. And I want to be, um, a, you know, a person or part of, you know, a couple that really like loves on people well and serves them well. And I think in general, like I want to be the person that people like when I die, I want people to say she was there period. Like that's it. She was there when things were hard or when things were awesome or, you know, she celebrated me. She was intentional with texting me on my birthday or when she knew I had something big coming up. Like, you know, so like the more that we can know more, you know, people, have people over to our house, like love on people, serve people that way. I'm all about that. Yeah. And I think you you said a really great thing in that the gift that anybody can give is to be present for somebody. You don't always have to have all the answers, but you can be there for people. And maybe it's that simple sometimes, you know? Yeah, exactly. I think in, in my past, I've thought a lot about like, how do you, how do I fix something or how do I make this better for them? And a lot of times what people really need or what they ask for is really for you to just be there and listen and, you know, sometimes there are things that you can do to help, you know, helping someone move is always awesome or, you know, watching their kid or whatever that looks like. But yeah, most of the time people just want someone to listen and I want to be that person for them. Perfect. Super well said. I would like to end the meaningful portion of the podcast with a story about you, Jacqueline, that is worth sharing to the world because it's rich with legacy and rich of meaning. My wife and I, Alexa, we moved recently into our first home. And we had a moving team and we also had to paint the whole house. That was kind of the one big thing about this move is that the whole thing was dark and dingy and it felt like a dungeon and we wanted to lighten it up. But we had really limited time, pretty much a 24 hour window to paint the entire house. And you, I believe, were the only non-family member to be there the entire time. You literally stayed until like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> doing the nastiest painting job. So just to paint a picture, imagine Jacqueline on a ladder with a paintbrush, cutting in, right? That's the term? Yeah. Cutting in. So it's like all the detail work while all the guys are just like slopping the big rollers. <laughs> That's what I was doing and complaining about it. 
and you were just there the whole time. Uh, my family, my my in law family, my family, yeah. but Alexa's family, they still think so highly of you, and mm-hmm. you will literally never be forgotten because of your kindness that night. In the next day, you came back, <laughs> so that's worth saying. I always want to be quick to celebrate the in huge air quotes small things people do because that's how you'll be remembered. Kevin, your grandma, her father will be remembered for the fried egg sandwich. People will be remembered for the things that they never thought they would be. And that's special. So that being said, I think you're both special people. Kevin, should we ask Jacqueline some fun questions I was before we wrap we, it up? I was hoping we would have to. Let's grill her. Let's do it. Let's, Let's grill, grill her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. You know what question comes first, Kevin. Hit it. How much protein do you eat per day? Um, between 125 and 150 grams of protein. Beast Ooh. mode. Love that. Wow. That's Thanks legit. for taking your goals seriously, Jacqueline. <laughs> do the pure protein bars help with that goal? They do help with that goal. I do love those. What's your favorite uh, flavor? Birthday cake? Yeah, you guys are birthday cakers. Yeah. I kind of got off the birthday cake for a while. I've been on strawberry now. Oh, no way. I've never, I don't think I've had strawberry. I don't yeah. like the strawberry. It's, the uh, lemon's good. I lemons. love the lemon. The lemon is so rich, though. I got to be in a mood for the lemon. It's kind of like dessert. It, it totally is. Yeah. I mean, it's tart. It'll get you. It's not like a breakfast food. Like you can, Sometimes you want to have like a breakfast bar. That's what I think the strawberry to me tastes like a breakfast bar. A pastry, maybe. Yeah. Pastry vibes. Like a, like a yeah, mediocre pastry. So I, I always eat two at a time unless I'm eating another protein <laughs> source with it. Mm-hmm. It's tough to eat two lemons. I bet. Yeah, I bet it would be. I bet any of those are hard to eat to have. I had a lemon yesterday. And Chocolate's the most doable for, for double. Chocolate Deluxe. It's bizarre. Is that Trump calling you right now? <laughs> My phone just rang and it says political call. It's a new... Don't I, you dare answer. iOS Live on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a really good one. And let's knock the other one out. Favorite uh, fast food restaurant? I love Chick-fil-A. God bless it. What do you get? Ooh... And you know, I've recently changed my order. Uh oh. I used to go with the classic number one, which is so good. So by the good. Way. I mean, thoughts on the pickle, real quick. Love it. Love the pickle. Here for the it. Pickle. More pickles. More pickles. Yeah. I'm totally what's your good. What's your updated order? Um, I've been doing the grilled chicken sandwich. That's my play. Yeah, I mean, it's such a good call. But I like the fries. I know you're kind of a mac and cheese fan, but I like the fries better. Well, I love fries too. Actually, Alexa's more the mac and cheese oh, okay. gal. I thought you. S- I thought you were a mac and cheese guy, but... Uh, well, no, I love mac okay, and cheese, okay. but I just don't typically order it You're at... Um, yeah, so I was raving about my positive Chick-fil-A customer experience right. ser- uh, service on social media, and we got the grilled chicken sandwich and the mac and cheese. Oh, that must have been what I was thinking Because that's what she gets. She gets the mac and cheese. Oh. I will say with COVID and their drive through it's difficult to pull the trigger on Chick-fil-A these days, because holy cow, that line is long. No offense to them. No, They're it's long, but it's can. pretty fast, man. It is fast. I it know, is fast. It's the men- the mental of sitting on the highway as you're also in line for the <laughs> drive through <laughs> Totally. You're like, dang it, we're going to do this. Totally. How many pairs of shoes do you own? Am I supposed to know this off the top of my head? I don't know. Maybe. Give us a ballpark. Give us a ballpark. Maybe like 12. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Not a ton. That's not a ton for a check. I'm not, I'm not a big, I'm I not probably, a big stuff person. I'm kind of like, I would like to call myself an essentialist. I have the things I need, Ooh, and that's it. That's better than a minimalist. You know what we because did Because it during seems COVID? like you're valuing the essentials, not necessarily just the sake of like getting rid of as yeah. much as possible. I think the thing with minimalism is just, it's not super doable. Like, to have like one spoon or like one pair of shoes. or Yeah, kind of dumb. It's like, well, do you want to ever want to have people over? You ever want to like... No, you get know. rid of all that. Could you ever live in a tiny home? Oh, God. oh, for sure. Yeah, but you wouldn't be able to be very hospitable. Exactly. And like, also, I could do it, too, and I would love it, but it's just, like, party for two. Yep. Yeah, no dogs. What would we do without our dogs? <laughs> yeah. Sleep better at night. No podcast. Would you? <laughs> we would sleep so much better. I mean, it would be cool to try. I don't think it would ever be, like, my permanent home or anything like that, but it'd be fun to travel the United States in one. Totally. I was going to say one fun thing we did during COVID that I think um, other people could implement, maybe, every... We did it, I think, every day because we were working from home when COVID was like at its worst. But we chose a room, and you could choose like one room every weekend and just go to town, throw away, donate, move. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we just wore literally every room. And if it was a small room, not that bad of a day. I think we did closets too. Yep. Um, 
but then you know two weeks go by and you're you're you threw away we were looking at the the trash that we threw away like in weight we didn't actually weigh it but it was like when you go to the dumpster and you throw stuff away it was like we threw away like a thousand pounds of non-essentials right so yeah that's another thing lately my wife has been killing it on facebook marketplace like she's just been finding things that she doesn't She doesn't need, and she's really good at that. So I want to I want to sing that praise in her life because she is not a hoarder. She, in fact, anytime we go to someone else's house and we see like stuff, or we help somebody move and they have a lot of stuff, we get stressed out and we go home and get rid of stuff. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's I mean, even just like knowing and being able to like touch all of our items and all the things we have, it just made us so much more like thankful for those things. But then also when you're like looking for something, you're like. I know exactly where this is. And that's such a good feeling. I love, um, I think in Marie Kondo's book, she talks about have everything having a home. And so I love, I've loved implementing that. Like this is where this goes. And every day at the end of the day, I try to take it back there. Um, and that way things just don't get cluttered and, yeah. you know. I'm probably admittedly not very good at that. <laughs> I'm sure Alexa would love things to have their home and I'm probably destroying that dream every day. <laughs> <laughs> I have a fun question. If you could... Move on from your current job, not because you don't like it, mm-hmm. but because this is a question on a podcast. Sure. And do anything full time. Mm. What would it be? Man, I've actually been thinking about this a lot. I don't know why. I mean, I'm definitely in love with my job and don't ever plan to leave. Um, but maybe have like a photography business or like a, a blog like that actually like has income um, or something like that. I don't Perfect. know. Oh, that's a great answer. Yeah. I like that. One of the hobbies. Jacqueline, what's your favorite carb source? Potatoes of mm. all kinds. Love potatoes. Thoughts on sweet potatoes? Love them. Love them. How long should you cook them? A long time. Long Longer time. Longer than you think. Longer than you think. They take forever. I agree. But you know how I really love sweet potatoes? I love them roasted in the oven mm. with just yeah, like baked. a little bit of salt and pepper. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do, baked. Love it. Like Especially if you cut them up into cubes, it takes a little bit less time. Sure. I'm a huge fan. I love that they're like complex carbs and they're just, they're just really good for you. And if you leave them in there long enough, they get super sweet. Like it feels like dessert. Yeah. I'm not a huge like cinnamon or sugar or marshmallow on the sweet potatoes. You know how sometimes they make it. Yeah. It's like a Thanksgiving thing. I really like the more like savory flavors. Fair enough. Salty flavors. Kevin, no pressure. Give us the best question you've got and then let's soar into the horizon. If I was going to pull up Expedia right now and buy two plane tickets, where would you want to go? New Zealand was the first thing that popped in my head, so let's Ooh, go with that. Oh, yeah. Okay. You can go hang out with the hobbits. Okay. That sounds great. That's a really good answer. I really do I like want to travel everywhere. I really want to go to Australia, but, a, ooh. you know. That's a long plane ride, right? Uh, yeah. The longest, right? I would love to go to Australia. Honestly, yeah. I'm up for it. a plane ride anywhere these days. Even a, That's even true. a car trip. I honestly, I just love traveling. I yeah. love seeing new places, yeah. meeting new people. I want to travel more. Perfect. Let's go. Okay. Good stuff, guys. Thank you so much. I think chiming in about how marriage relates to legacy is going to be really powerful for a lot of people, and it's a really cool topic that we just haven't touched on. So uh, thanks for being open to it and being pioneers in that genre. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thanks for asking. You've been a gem. Alexa's next. Alexa is next. Can't wait. Strap up, babe. Yeah. We'll We're doing it. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Kevin, why don't you give us an outro? You do it best. I'll never do it because I was why would say, I? We should have you do it. One. I refuse. All right. You're the man. Send us into the horizon. Give people a reason to live their Tuesday with a smile on their face. That's right, everybody. We do hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Don't forget, if you are looking to change your life and focus more on your own legacy, a Final Vibe membership provides you with immediate access to a community of people doing just that, as well as other exclusive content. Today's episode was produced by co-host Andrew White. If you liked what you heard, subscribe to future episodes and tell one other person about us. Or more. Or more. Why do I put one in there? Tell everybody you know Could about Could be two, us. three, four, five, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We appreciate all the support that we've received so far, and we hope to see you online. Final Vibe is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Final Vibe. And you can see our website and some fresh apparel at FinalVibe.com. Enjoy the rest of your week, folks. We will see you back here next Tuesday for another episode. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great Tuesday. Seriously, go buy the coffee. Get it. Buy the coffee.